Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. We're out here in Southwest Ohio, and it's getting later in the year, bud. It's almost time to get a whole lot of stuff planted. We are planting a lot of a lot of vegetables still. We're growing quite a few things already. I'm gonna kind of take you through, show you what we've got growing, show you a couple of things that we're we'll doing today. There's some onions growing over here, if you can see them pretty well. These are the this is the second round of onions we planted. We did a video on that. Some of these are a little small. They were small when we planted them, but some of these over here on the front are doing really good. There, I'm looking forward to those. Onions are something that we really like to grow. It's a really beneficial uh, vegetable to grow for somebody who likes to cook a lot. And Angela obviously loves to cook a lot. Does a whole lot of cooking. And onions are a good base for a lot of recipes, right? You can start a lot of sauces, do a lot of saute and onions with a lot of things. So onions are a good base to have when you're cooking, so it really helps you cook sustainably. Right here, I don't know if you can see in here or not, but we got some of our magnolia tendril peas that started popping through. They're really hard to get to germinate, but when they do, they start. <laughs> There's a couple. There's another one right there. There's a few all, all throughout this row. I'm gonna keep this chicken wire in front of them right now because we've had a rabbit running through and a rabbit would just gnaw those right off. It would never get started, so we try to keep protected from that. Plus, uh, we do kind of have some chickens that We'll probably come over here and munch on them as well. So if we, if we want the food, we gotta protect it, right? Now we're coming in here to this green stalk. We've had to keep the covers on them because we've had some colder nights. I'm just trying to get these seeds to germinate. This one here, we planted with a bunch of kale and Swiss chard, and it hasn't done that well. Mostly, I think a lot of the uh, a lot of the seeds got washed down because we had some really hard rain right after we planted it. But we do have some ragged jack kale popping up. And there's a Swiss chard down there at the bottom. I probably just need to replant this. There's still plenty of time to get that kale and Swiss chard planted. Actually, the Swiss chard does fine even into the summer for us here. Um, the kale, yeah, probably needs to get going, but we're still plenty of time. I, need, I do need to replant that. We still have seeds, so might as well just replant it. But this green stalk right beside it has been planted for a while, and it's looking really good. Some spots aren't, aren't as full as others, but it is looking really nice. See, look at this. See how good this this uh, lettuce is looking. This Merlot Chinese cabbage. And then down here at the bottom, we got some spinach. And then down here on this side, we have some spinach growing right here, looking good. This side needs to get a little needs to do a little better. This side's doing really good. This romaine is doing really nice. This uh, purple pak choy is doing really good here. But some really good lettuce growing. A lot of times we'll plant the lettuce for uh, for baby greens. This time we want to see if we can't get some heads. So that's a little gem butterhead and some speckled romaine that we're trying to get to make just a full head of lettuce, just to see if we can have just a nice, beautiful head of lettuce. Just can't be kind of fun. Over here we see our radishes started started to uh, germinate and popping through really nicely. There, up through here as well. Now again, radishes are something you really need to grow in the spring and the fall, early spring and fall, because they grow really fast and they don't like heat. <laughs> so I, they, they can handle it, but they turn bitter and, and kind of sharper, and have a, more of a, a spicier bite to them. They're much more milder when they're going in cool temperatures. Hey, big girl, watch out, watch out. Don't run, <laughs> don't get out. These girls are always trying to run out on me. So if I don't latch this door, they'll push it open and escape. I want to tell you, you escaping? You too, Heidi. You're bad for it. These girls are always trying to pull one over on me. Ooh, Madeline. And ooh, Lily. Lily did lay an egg. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Madeline. One escape artist on me when I left the coop, didn't I? Come on, sweetness. Go back in. Go back in. Madeline is a, the little white one. She's a she's a four-year-old Easter egger that we got from my pet chicken. She's always been a great layer. Lily, on the other hand, is a six-year-old uh, double lace barn velder that we got from my pet chicken. And she is one who honestly, she's rejuvenated. She laid this egg here. She's rejuvenated by the uh, New Country Organics feed that we use. 
We've had a handful of them that were just simply rejuvenated, but that were on the brink of stopping laying and possibly dying. And she's one of them. She's done such a great job. Over here, we had to cover this rhubarb up the last couple of nights because it's supposed to be in the mid 30s, and it didn't want to, we didn't want to stun its growth. And it's because it's doing so well. Look at this. So we have two different varieties of rhubarb planted at the same time. Uh, but obviously this one's a much different outcome than this one. But again, they're two different varieties as well. But look at this. Beautiful stalks of rhubarb in here. Uh, we're so excited about it. We love, we love rhubarb around here. This one's doing good though too. We'll be able to harvest some of this this year. You can't, you're not supposed to harvest till like year three, I guess. Um, so this is actually the second year here, but we bought crowns that were a year older from the start. So we should be able to harvest some of this this year. You don't want to harvest too much because you don't want to kill the crowns. It's very, very, very fickle. So you don't want to kill the crowns, but this one, obviously that one right there, we need to harvest some of that for sure. This one, however, we might let, we might let that one go for now just because it's much, you know, it's much smaller. Good basket of eggs today. They're doing well. Here's our pepper plants. They're looking good. They're looking great. Look at that. They're so awesome. They're the best looking pepper plants we've had yet, honestly. Even though we always do pretty solid with them. They look wonderful. A couple of them are a little, look like they might need a little, a little fertilization. A little light color, but they're doing great. The tomatoes, however, actually are doing really good. They just seem smaller, right? Look at them. Yes, they're smaller. They haven't been planted that long. Very looked very small for people, but the idea here is that they need to be this at this size about right now. We, they may be a little behind, just a little, from where we really wanted them. But in the past probably three years, we've had them. We've planted them a little too soon. Maybe they've been planted a little too long. Maybe they grew a little faster than what we planned on. And by the time we were planting them uh, after Mother's Day, they were <laughs> they were huge. I mean, massive. Mass probably honestly, they're probably like this tall probably 18 inches to two feet tall across the board and that was a little too big to be handling and having if they're if they're if it's gonna have a late frost or late freeze we got to take them inside and it gets to be a lot I mean a whole lot and they're almost too big to deal with without damaging them and then they would also get a little root bound and maybe be get a little too big for their for their uh, pot and they might want to start blossoming too early so we're trying to manage their growth a little bit better this year and if they're a little smaller hey that's okay because we still have we still have a little bit of time before before we're safe to put these in the ground so we're actually doing just fine with this size now over here in our center block bed we have some more onions planted that are doing wonderfully uh, these are the first ones we planted so they've been in the ground longer a little bit longer and these are doing great and all throughout here we've got some that are oh uh, that one struggled it didn't make it but obviously it wasn't that big to start with sometimes you get that when you buy onion plants uh they just simply sometimes send you ones that don't make it they're kind of splendidly and whatever and they tell you it's 50 to 75 in a bundle a lot of times and um so they it's just what you get it is what it is when you buy onion plants sometimes you get ones that just simply don't don't cut don't cut mustard but we do have a lot of beautiful garlic a lot of beautiful garlic right here this is this is chestnut red over here but over here amongst all this chickweed is our favorite garlic music garlic it's big 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 heads of garlic but it's obviously this happens every year all this chickweed grows up around it every year I'll come through, I'll pull it out, I'll weed it, but it still keeps growing back, which is not the worst thing in the world. It looks like a nuisance. It feels like a nuisance sometimes. But what if I just turn this nuisance into some nutrition for my chickens? Because the chickens think and love it. Now it's edible for humans too. I personally don't eat it. Never really tried it. Don't care to eat weeds in the in the yard. That's just me. But Angela's tasted it and she says it tastes fine, but the chickens adore it. I mean, like if I put some chickens in here, they'd wear this mess out. But I don't really want to mess around with the garlic, so I'm just going to pull this stuff up and feed it to the chickens. So I'm going to give them this pan full tonight. There's still plenty back in there. Probably another pan full tomorrow. And as you can see right here, they're rather excited about the prospects of what of eating what's inside this pan. Come on, kids. There you go. Eat up, children.
Maggie, do you like it? I spooked poor little Sophia. She's a little jumpy. But she's a good one. Now you see that. That's part of feeding weeds to your chickens for nutrition. Give you, helps them feel better. Keeps them happier. Keeps them active. Keeps them laying good eggs to feed you. Right? So it kind of all works together, right? We're taking the weeds out of there. Putting them, giving them to the chickens. They're, we're feeding them. They're feeding us. Possibly that's part of the art of creation as well, right? Maybe, maybe that's why we have the name we have. <laughs> Who knows? And now we've got some broccolis to plant. There's, there's more than what we're going to use here right now, but we're going to plant 18 of these bad boys in a three-tiered green stalk. So this is what we're going to do. We got these bad boys here and put them in here, right? So in this, we've already got some good base light for light, light organic fertilizer here it's a good base like five four three or something then on top of that we got some kelp mill for um potassium and some bone mill for some phosphorus broccoli needs like a good 5 10 10. uh it's kind of like potatoes in a way for as far as fertilizer just double the amount of potassium and phosphorus or phosphorus and potassium then you would do the nitrogen and that's what we're trying to do here with no real no real science to it just trying to throw in what what we think it needs just kind of eyeballing it I did all that, layered that up. I'm just gonna take this little three-pronged handheld uh, cultivator and just mix it in. Real simple. And as you mix in, you just kind of break up the, the soil from last year. Because this is just the soil that was left in this green stalk from last year. We planted some greens in it late. So just kind of break that up a little bit and mix the fertilizer at the same time. So Angela's taking this, the beautiful roots, look at that. Doing good. You break those roots up or not? Yeah. Okay, so squashes, you don't want to break them up, but no. broccoli, it's, it's okay. Yeah. All right, break it up, pack it in there. All right, we're gonna do that 18 times, stack them up, and we'll show you what it looks like when we're done, okay? And look at this, 10 minutes later, we've got 18 broccoli plants planted. And you can do a lot when you and your wife or you and her husband, spouse work together. And this happened in like 10 minutes, no, no, no um, problem at all. And hopefully we get some broccoli out of it. We, we haven't been super successful at growing broccoli in the past. We have had some seasons where we've had some broccoli, but again, the weather here isn't always conducive to it. It's looking okay right now. We're gonna put some Agrabond, a little, it's a little frost protector over that for now. It's gonna be a little cold tonight, next couple of nights, next little bit. So that'll help that adjust. But also it's gonna protect it from the cabbage moths flying around and uh, laying their eggs and trying to trying to eat all of our brassicas, <laughs> right? So there we have, oh, and by the way, that's a green stalk, right? And if you guys watch us, you know, we have affiliate link and code in the description below. Spring is here. This is the time of year where they have a lot of sales. If you're looking to possibly buy a green stalk, you're gonna to wanna to get it when it's on sale, right? Well. Go, go to their website, sign up, for, sign up for their email. You're gonna know when the sales are. We'll tell you when they are, but you may have to wait on a video to come out. They'll tell you when they're coming up day of. So if you want a green stock, want to get it on sale, want to get $10 off, <laughs> right? So I always want to do things the financially efficient way. So that's the way you do that. So you go, use our code when you buy, you get $10 off, but then if you sign up for, sign up for the email list, you'll know when the sales are. So that's really what you want to know um what you want to know when it's coming up because when those sales are so you get it real cheap so again thank you guys so much for watching we do appreciate it. my name is jason that was angela k help me help me plant that broccoli it's art of creation homestead we love y'all god bless you and goodbye